Hello everyone, my name is Jai and welcome back to another video. So on the 30th and 31st of March of 2024, I went up to see the Diamond Creek exhibition which was held at the Community Bank Stadium. Now this is the furthest that I have ever gone to see any exhibition and for the most part I think it was definitely worth it. I ended up uh, getting quite a few really nice goodies which you'll end up seeing at the end of this video. And overall I had a really good time at the exhibition. There were a lot of really good lads and vendors. And uh, speaking about vendors, uh, something that I do want to quickly address is most of this video will focus on the vendors. I decided to change things up a little bit as my last two exhibition layout videos uh, didn't have me showing any of the vendors. So I thought I would change it up a little bit. And plus, there are already tons of YouTube videos out there of this exhibition where they do show all the layouts. So if you're just interested in seeing the layouts, just go watch one of those videos. But uh, with this one, I'm going to be mainly focusing on the vendors. But I think that's everything I have to say for now. So go ahead, kick back, get yourself a snack, and I hope that you enjoy this video.
aqui.
just the uh, the trailers? Yes. Yeah, four tab.
about 300. Yeah. Sure, yeah.
he's the king himself. No, no. How have you been? Busy, busy. It's been a busy month. Pretty keen for it to be over. Uh, we can have a bit of a relax in Silverose Hill in May. So. so you should be able to have a relax in Easter? No, absolutely not. We're here. Oh, we're here yesterday, yeah. we're here today and tomorrow, and then uh, yeah, at least get Monday off. Hopefully they give you free chocolate eggs. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Find out tomorrow. So I'm now back from the exhibition and well as you can see this is all the stuff that I did get. So firstly I got a small little level crossing set. Uh, this is a light flasher 
which is of course meant to make the lights flash and also I, I think the sensor for the for these things which I got two of them you can see uh, it was pretty uh, reasonable price honestly this was about 20 bucks and these were also 20 bucks so all up, it was only 60 bucks for these three things and what was pretty cool is that the guy there had a small display of actually some signals and these level crossings actually in motion. And he was even nice enough to let me take a picture of what they actually looked like, uh, like how to put it all together. So that was really nice. So I might try and see if I can do a little test run with these later on. Uh, Next up, I, bought, I just decided to get another random SCT wagon. <laughs> Nothing too special, it's just, you know, one of those generic SCT wagons. Nonetheless, I do want to build an SCT train, so that's uh, another wagon uh, for longer. And here is my first SCT locomotive. This one is just a DC model, and it's SCT-007. It does cost a little bit more than a normal locomotive. This costs about 30 or so dollars extra than your usual model. Which is, I guess, sort of alright. It's not uh, necessarily that much more detailed, in my opinion, than a $335 model. But still, it's definitely pretty good. So, <coughs> again, these are the next two items from my SCT collection. I've got about seven of these wagons. And... This locomotive and the CF, so definitely a getting there to a small little SCT train, which is pretty good. Now, for the final thing I got, this was actually the first thing I got at the exhibition. In fact, I didn't even last five minutes in the door without seeing this. And it is a, another end set. Now, this one is the, or as what lots of people like to call it, the cheeseburger livery. So I'm just going to call it that. And, uh,. Even though this was a second-hand uh, lot, as you can see, it did cost around $650, which is $100 more than what you could get them as brand new. Now, I have to admit, I'm definitely not too happy that I had to spend an extra 100 bucks for a second-hand bit of uh, rolling stock. But I do understand that these are actually starting to get a bit rare now, and especially with these uh, type of liveries, the cheeseburger, and I think the Vic Rail V line, which I also have, is actually getting rare as well. But the other two end sets I have, which is the Vic Rail V line and the uh, Blood and Bone, they only cost me around, I think it was three fifty for the Blood and Bone, and that was shrink wrapped in box. And the Vic Rail V-Line was only 310 But, uh, so I'm not really 100% sure why this one is all of a sudden like an extra $100 from brand new condition. And also this isn't brand new. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does look like it's in pretty mint condition. Uh, the code just don't look like that they're broken in any way. So... When I take a look at it, as long as there's nothing wrong with it, then in my opinion, it's not really a big deal. But I'm just saying as, a, as an example, I was able to get an end set for 350 that was completely shrink-wrapped, never open, and a Vicrail V-Line one, which is apparently also very, very popular and rare, but I got that for about 310 So, yeah, that's just, I guess, my excuse uh, for that. But nonetheless, I'm still happy. <coughs> Uh, the only thing that sucks though is I've got all these end sets and yet I don't have a single end class. The closest thing that I was able to get for at least this type of livery for the end set was A66 in the cheeseburger. But they wanted around $500 for the A class and I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Considering that decision I'm going to do a rerun of the A's pretty soon, I have no doubt that A66 in the V-Line T, uh, uh, sorry, in the V-Line cheeseburger will be around. So I'm just going to wait for the reruns of the A classes, and I'm definitely not spending an extra, like, 200 bucks just for a another A class. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But all up, that is everything that I did get. So I guess what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and open up some of this stuff. 
Uh, I'm probably not going to worry about opening the SCT wagon because we already have done that in the previous video. But I think we'll go ahead and maybe start off with the locomotive. And then we'll move on to the N set. And then later on, if I do in the same video, I might see if I can get these working. So with that, let's go ahead and start with the locomotive. So of course we'll start by tearing out the plastic wrapping, there we go, and then out she should just come, there we go. Not of course the instructions, but they're too boring. And we'll get her out of the plastic eyes. And one nice thing is that I think, at least for one side, they've taken the hand uh, rail safety things out, yeah, because one side's got it. Uh, it's just so you could, I guess, look at the model a bit better. But yeah, there you go. So again, this one is SCT-007. And uh, again, this one is just DC. It isn't DCC. For those who are unfortunate. For what I heard, I'm pretty sure Ascision have actually got a rerun of these coming out fairly soon. I know on their page they've got a uh, like a description of some models coming out soon, and these were in it, so I might get one or two from Ascision as well. But as you can see, we've got like a lot of really nice grill detail under there, which uh, does look really really nice. And I should mention that this is from Rail Motor Models. Underneath, I'm assuming those are the lights, which is to turn the lights on and off. Alright, get the camera a little bit higher for this, got to get all the unboxing action. I wonder how long it's going to be before I accidentally knock some uh, detail off this thing. I reckon not too long. Oh, the one good thing is that these look like the these have been like wrapped in properly, like they would be brand new. And do they have these side things? No, they don't. And don't worry about that, my screen just came off, so that's why it just went dark. But yeah, there you go. Here is the cheeseburger, as it's known, livery. Which I personally do like better on the N sets. I don't mind the PTV livery on it, but uh, I prefer this livery more. But this is meant to be the first class, and yet, yeah, as you can see, we do have some opening doors. I don't want to open it too much because uh, I did do that one time and I broke some detail off it. This is meant to be the first class. You might be able to tell because, of course, we've got this uh, compartment for the conductor. And we also have purple seats. As you can see, yeah, it looks really nice. So that is the first class. Next up, we have the, I think, well, it's meant to be the buffet in the middle but this is the the standard the comedy you can see you just got the generic seats and again you got uh, the, uh, the v-line logo printed on there very nicely lots of very nice detail got the roof which is no doubt going to very quickly get fingerprint marks all over it uh, I really didn't show underneath, didn't I? There you go. Of course, we've got the nice Ascision logo there. And you could sort of see through the coach. Yeah. So that is the second car. 
Now time for the buffet. There we go. So yeah, pretty much your same standards from the outside, but as you can see from the inside, we've got the buffet, which is definitely pretty all right. One thing I am really helping when a uh, uh, when a decision do the reruns of the N classes, I'm hoping that they're going to do a rerun of the N sets as well. I have no doubt they're going to. But, of course, only time will tell. You know, we're not going to know until it actually happens. But I have uh, a lot of faith that Ascision will do a rerun of the N sets as well when they do the N classes. To me, I think it's just uh, an inevitable for that to happen. But anyway, our last thing that we're going to look at is, of course, the, the van. I think they call them yeah, the D van. As you can see, this one is definitely a little bit more plain to the uh, other ones I got. The Blood and Bone one, for example. But still, it's pretty nice. The V-Line logo with the wave is uh, very nice as well. Or, I guess this one is known as the P-Van. <laughs> okay. And this does have opening doors. So if you wanted to, you could put small bits of luggage in there. But overall, yeah, very cool. So, there we go. Pop these all one side. Cross fingers that none of them roll over. Let's put in the proper lineup. That'd be that. Then the buffet. And then of course, the first class. This was the N set that I got. And as I mentioned before, uh, it was a bit expensive, but looking at it, it does seem to be all there. No bits of details or bits and pieces have broken off, so I can definitely say that it wasn't like a ridiculous price with a broken pack or anything like that. So I'm definitely pretty happy with it. Again, now I really am just a little bit annoyed that it was about 650 but... You know, what can you do? I obviously got a little bit now. I did spend the money, so all in all, though, I am pretty happy. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the next items, which is going to be the small little level, cro uh, uh, bleh, level crossing setup that I got. And we'll take a look and see if I can get it working. So let's do that next. Alright, so I decided to wire it all up off camera, but yeah, as you can see, I've got them working. And yeah, here's what they look like. Now, we did actually have a slight problem with one of them. Uh, one of the sides of the lights weren't working properly, so we had to solder. Uh, one side of it. Not sure which one. It, oh, actually, I think it might have been this one. It was one of them anyway. But yeah, as you can see, they do look really nice. And yeah, both sides are flashing. It's really cool. And uh, this is the light flasher unit. All up, you can fit about four of these crossings uh, on this. And this is powered by just a generic 9 volt battery which is in my opinion probably the best way to do it it saves you from having wires going absolutely everywhere uh, the only bummer is, is that I don't really have a like, proper place for these yet uh, although I'd love to like, just stick them anywhere uh, and put blue tack on them the wires then they would be so thin as soon as I will put it down or try to pull it back up it's just going to destroy it so as you can see it's definitely a good little system and it does work I have also actually tried some other crossing gates that I did get a couple years ago and yeah those ones actually do flash as well so you can probably use this with any uh, crossing which is good it is compatible it seems like with any type that you get so yeah overall definitely really happy with these and as well as that I'm also really happy with the other things I got the N set even though that was definitely a bit expensive uh, and of course the locomotive which is what you have been hearing in the background as you can see, it is running absolutely fine. 
and yeah, overall, uh, overall, definitely really happy with it. So, with that, everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed my video at the Diamond Creek exhibition. I hope to see you guys in my next video, whenever that will be, of course. But with that, guys, take care, and I will see you in my next video. Ciao.